So the next logical question about that is what about a moving light, right? I've got a moving light in my theater and it's got an arc lamp in it. It's definitely not three LEDs behind there. It's definitely a white light. I can see the white light coming out from behind it. So moving lights use what's called a subtractive mixing system. So a subtractive mixing system uses the opposite of our RGB, our opposite of our primers. It uses uh, CMY or cyan yellow magenta mixing. Uh, the best way I can describe this is if you look at this again, kind of as a math problem. So if we read this slide from left to right, we start out here, we look at this a line at a time. We've got equal parts red, green, and blue going into a cyan gel or a cyan filter. That cyan is allowing our blue and green to pass through. So now if we skip this next part for a second, we look at a magenta, we see magenta is allowing red and blue to pass through. So if I put that magenta here in front of this light chain, it's gonna subtract out that green and the only thing that's allowed to be passed through is my blue. So by varying the saturation levels of the cyan, the yellow, and the magenta wheels within our moving lights, that's how we're able to mix them in a single fixture with a white light to form any other color. To help you visualize that a little bit better, here's a picture from a, I believe this is a Mac 300 glass wheel. So this part in the center here, or excuse me, this part at the bottom that just is an open cutout, this would be what would be in front of your light if it was an open white light. You know, I put that there, it's gonna have open white coming through it. As this disc rotates in front of my lighting fixture, this is how I get more and more saturated color. So as it comes in here, I'll say this is like 10% saturation, but watch these little lines as you go around the circle, they get thicker and thicker until eventually all we have is color and we don't have a lot of white poking through anymore. So if you have a cyan, a magenta, and a yellow one of those all mixing in front of each other in a single fixture, then you're gonna get, you're gonna get any color you want out of that. How many of you have ever seen these before or old enough to remember this? This is a Morpheus color fader. Uh, this was the same concept. It was, it was three gel strings, and instead of, instead of a dichroic glass thing, it was perforated gel. So this was an open white. You can see there were a bunch of holes with a bunch of clear gel there. And as you, as you scrolled those in, those holes got a little bit smaller and the gel itself got a little more saturated. So, you know, early color mixing technology. Same thing that would happen with a sea changer. All right, sea changer has a cyan, a magenta, and a yellow disc. And they have like the gradiated uh, saturation levels on it. And as you roll that in more, it gets more saturated or pull it out, it gets less saturated. So, Key difference, key difference here, when we're talking about additive mixing for the most part, we're talking about multiple sources. When we're talking about subtractive mixing, we're talking about it happening in a single source. Of course, both of those systems work together in harmony. So the light itself, you know, moving light itself might be doing subtractive mixing to produce the color that we want it to produce. The, that, that color, that light is then being projected onto a stage where it's mixing with other sources in an additive fashion. So we're using both of these systems simultaneously. 